China's People's Liberation Army Air Force has manufactured indigenous derivatives of the Soviet MiG-21 fighter design since the year 1965 as the Chengdu J-7 and retains around 400 of these platforms in active service today as highly enhanced derivatives such as the J-7G. Upgrades to the J-7 design have provided it with advanced capabilities considerably exceeding those of early fourth-generation fighters including integration of composite materials for a lighter and stronger airframe, a full glass cockpit, a new double delta wing, multifunctional heads-up displays, helmet-mounted sights, a radar cross-section reducing fuselage, conformal fuel tanks, and state-of-the-art munitions and sensors. China's Chengdu Aircraft Corporation continued to manufacture MiG-21 derivatives under the J-7 designation until the year 2013, just four years after it would provide the PLA with its first fifth-generation aircraft, the J-20. These J-7 aircraft were intended both as lighter complements to the heavier J-11B fighters in the PLA, as well as for export to defense clients such as Bangladesh. While 2013 represent the end of J-7 production, it was far from the end of China's manufacture of MiG-21 derivatives. From 2006, China would manufacture the JF-17 Block 1 fighter jets which were loosely derived from the J-7 design. Unlike the J-7, the fighters had a radically redesigned fuselage which appeared entirely different to the MiG-21 making use of air inlets on the side of the nose cone rather than in the nose cone to host a larger radar in the random. This was largely based on experimental J-7 variants, the J-7FS, and J-7MS, which made use of inlets under the chin. The JF-17 has since been enhanced to the point that it is unrecognizable next to the original J-7 design, with the latest JF-17 Block 3 variants integrating state-of-the-art sensors and missile technologies and specialized radar cross-section reducing airframes. Alongside the JF-17, a more direct derivative of the J-7 and MiG-21 was the JL-9 Fighter Plus Trainer, which also made use of side air inlets. The aircraft retained fourth-generation combat capabilities and saw its first flight in 2003. The platform entered service in the PLA Air Force and PLA Navy in 2014 and 2015 respectively. The aircraft is in many ways similar to the JF-17 Thunder, although it was not designed for high-end air-to-air combat in the same way and is considerably less costly. The design instead prioritizes attack and training roles and inherits the low cost of the J-7 both to manufacture and to operate. The JL-9 is reportedly set to be developed into a carrier-based trainer, the JL-9G, which has a tailhook, and a strengthened airframe and is designed for ski jump and possibly catapult assisted takeoffs. The JL-9 design has also been developed into a more combat capable and attack oriented variant, the FTC-2000G, which integrates a new wing and a full glass cockpit and inherits the engine, empennage and mechanical controls of the J-7. This latter variant has more capable multi-role combat capabilities and entered mass production in late 2018. The FTC-2000G has more weapons hardpoints and a driverless supersonic air inlet, but reportedly has a shorter range than the original variant. The JL-9S design fulfills a very different role to the original MiG-21 and the J-7G, both of which were designed for high-end air-to-air engagements in their time, but inherits its highly reliable and versatile airframe which has been enhanced successively over more than 50 years by Chinese designers. The fact that China had one of the most capable and sophisticated military aviation industries in the world the first outside the United States to develop a fifth-generation fighter jet and continues to manufacture derivatives of the MiG-21 design, is testament to the platform's continued viability despite claims that it has become obsolete. 
Indeed, Chengdu has taken the design far further than Russia or the Soviet Union ever did and may well make a carrier-based MiG-21 a reality in the form of the JL-9G. The design is set to remain in production well into the 2020s and possibly beyond and is a potentially highly popular import for China's third world defense clients due to its combination of high versatility, reliability, ease of maintenance, and low cost.